we're going to have Paul Brady, who is the Senior Manager uh, Information Security at Optum. Um, Paul is going to be the moderator for today's session and is the lead for the Northwest chapter. Uh, Paul is bought into the philosophy really behind what we're trying to achieve with Cyber Ireland. Uh, he attended the Cluster Initiation Workshop in Galway in 2019. Um, Optum was one of the first companies to sign up for Cluster membership. Uh, he attended the West chapter launch in Galway earlier this year in February. Uh, and over the summer, he has been working and talking to people in the Northwest to get this chapter up and running. So Paul's going to moderate today's session. He's going to explain the need for a Northwest chapter and who's involved and what it's all about. Uh, then we have Paul Walsh, VP of Engineering at McAfee and Cyber Ireland Chairperson and myself are going to give an overview of Cyber Ireland, what it's all about, what's the purpose and what are we trying to do through these regional chapters as well. Next we have our guest speaker, uh, Alison Miller, CISO from Optum, who is taking a break from news on the US elections to join us here today from Minneapolis in the US at what I can only presume is an ungodly hour of the morning over there. So thanks very much, Alison, for joining us. Uh, and then this is going to be followed by a panel discussion. Um, we have uh, our, our chapter leads uh, from the Northwest are going to be discussing the, the strengths and challenges of the, the Northwest cybersecurity sector, uh, and also what should be the goals of this regional chapter as well. Uh, today is also about getting your input and feedback on the development of the chapter because this is a, an initiation event so we're going to have a survey for you to, to fill out as part of today's session. So without uh, further ado I'm going to pass it over to Paul uh, to kick off the launch of the Northwest chapter. Thanks Owen. Um, so I suppose I just want to spend a, a few minutes uh, on kind of why we're here today to launch the, the Cyber Island Northwest chapter. I suppose to kick off, I'd just like to do a quick intro to the other uh, Northwest uh, chapter leads and, and thank them for getting on board and, and helping to get us to this point and, and to launch the Northwest chapter. So, so our other members are Keen Collins, who's the, the country manager for Advantio here in Sligo, uh, Veronica Rogers, who's a lecturer in IT Sligo, and uh, John McGarvey, who's a lecturer in Letterkenny IT. I suppose then just a bit about myself. So I've been working in, in the technology industry for about 20 years, I suppose for about just over half of that time I've been working in cybersecurity. As Owen said, I currently work for, for Optima in Letterkenny, but uh, Sligo, Sligo is actually home. So when I think about the industry, it's obviously changed significantly in the in the short time frame that I've been working in it. You know, when I started out, the focus was really about kind of securing infrastructure, applications, data, things like that. But, you know, it still is today, but I suppose the stakes are higher. The environments we need to secure are much more complex. You know, if you think about things like kind of cloud computing, the prevalence maybe of, you know, artificial intelligence and products, everything has connectivity to the internet, including cars, industrial systems, medical devices, items in the home and stuff like that. So it's still a relatively young industry. We know there's a shortage of cybersecurity professionals globally. So I think that's why it's really important that we kind of have a coordinated approach as to how we kind of address the shortage, kind of help to drive innovation in cybersecurity and obviously create kind of, you know, forums for, for networking, collaboration, you know, sharing stories. So kind of feel this is important to kind of both, you know, across kind of regional level, national level, international level. So when I look at the Northwest, there's obviously a lot of good things, you know, happening already around cybersecurity. If you look at things like, you know, the track record that, you know, Letterkenny IT and IT Sligo have in terms of delivery of you know technology and, and cyber programs we've obviously got the employment in the multinationals we've got some indigenous companies doing some some innovative things we'll hear from from one of those later on the panel discussion and um, we've got kind of advocacy programs and obviously we've got a kind of healthy meetup scene so so the likes of the work that the, the folks in the north by northwest uh, tech meetup are doing the tech northwest cluster and others so as was as own mentioned there's been you know, a lot of work has been done to this point. Um, you know, when I originally socialised the idea of a of a Northwest chapter with with kind of some of the stakeholders in the Northwest, it was kind of clear was clear to me from the start that there was you know consensus kind of across you know industry, kind of academia and government that this was something that that could benefit the kind of cyber community and obviously the region as well. So, so kind of based on that feedback or the initial feedback we've got, we're kind of starting out looking at three areas. So one is networking and collaboration. Second area is kind of talent and skills. And the third area is uh, awareness and advocacy. But 
obviously, you know, we want to partner with the existing groups in the Northwest, um, you know, to support the cyber cybersecurity community, you know, connect with the other chapters across uh, Cyber Ireland. So we will be running a, a survey during the panel discussion later. So, you know, I'd encourage you to kind of give us your feedback. Let us know what you'd like to kind of see from the chapter in future. You know, it's really important that we obviously get that feedback and we can kind of focus on the right things. You know, I'd also like to kind of stress that I suppose we just, it's great to get to the launch event and, and kick things off, but I suppose it's it's what we kind of do, you know, from, from you know, going forward with, with the chapter that, that, that'll make it work for us. So that's it for me for now. So thanks again. Uh, I'll hand you back to Owen and Paul for a quick intro to Cyber Ireland. Super. Thanks very much, Paul. Um, Paul Walsh, uh, if you'd like to join us and say a few words maybe on behalf of the Cyber Ireland board, Sure. Um, yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great day for, for Cyber Ireland to have, you know, a new chapter in, in the, the Northwest. And I'd like to thank Paul, Veronica, John and Mike for, for working to, to put this together. Um, you know, Cyber Ireland is, is very keen, you know, to build a community. Um, you know, one of our current core pillars is focused on, you know, spreading you know, the message in relation to, you know, cyber security activities across the country. Um, you know, there's lots of clusters, you know, in, in different parts of Ireland today. Down the south, there's a strong security cluster. There's, there's one in Dublin, obviously, you know, in the west and, and now up in, in, in the northwest as well. Um, you know, we, we've built chapters in, in Cork, this kind of southern chapter. We've got a, a western chapter now. It's fantastic to have a, a new chapter because it, it helps us, you know, spread, you know, the message of how important cybersecurity is today. You know, when we set up two years ago, um, you know, we, we were focused on trying to bring together the multinationals, the SMEs, government and, and academia um, to, to basically, you know, you know, I suppose establish, you know, a, a strong presence um, for all cybersecurity related activity in Ireland. Um, and, you know, we, we, we've, we were helped at the start with by Enterprise Ireland, <coughs> sorry, by, by the IDA. They, they kind of got us funded um, and, and kind of set us up for, for the first two years. And then recently we got more funding from um, Enterprise Ireland. So we've got funding for another three years. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to continue to evolve um, the message um, to, to bring all the communities together. And it, you know, it, it's a very interesting area, you know, I think a lot of us are focused on on kind of particular you know areas of uh, specialization within cybersecurity, but once you start to kind of peel it away, it, it's extraordinarily broad, uh, and the opportunities we have are, are are enormous. You know we're kind of building you know cybersecurity on kind of four key pillars. Um, I talked about build, building the community, which is you know you know really great part of 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 um, you know having chapters. It, it enables you know us to to get the message to the entire country, but also bring communities together, maybe in, in, in different geogra <coughs> geographies. You know, we look at talent and skills as well, and, and that's a major challenge for, for industry, for, for multinationals, for SMEs. Um, <coughs> it's, a, it's, an, it's a challenge for universities trying to tra attract people uh, to study, you know, cybersecurity as a specialized area. And, um, you know, there's a lot of activity right now where we're engaging with universities right across the country. Um, to 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 promote more cybersecurity focused courses, um, you know, and you learn more about that as we go along. But it, you know, you know, it, it's a, certainly a challenge to attract you know really great talent into this area. Um, we're also working with schools, um, both primary schools and secondary schools, to promote cybersecurity as a career path for them. Um, you know, and there's a lot of really great work happening there. Um, it's one that I think we're going to continue to focus in on because it's so critical. Um, I don't think we'll ever be finished there. You know, we all know working in the industry, you know, that there's a significant shortage of, of dedicated cybersecurity talent. Uh, and that's one area that we really want to kind of try and, you know, progress within Ireland. Um, we have another strong focus on R&D. And a lot of research happening across the country in universities and in organizations. And we're trying to bring those closer together uh, to see how we can influence the research agenda um, and, and, and create a an opportunity for Ireland to be at the centre of, of research in relation to cybersecurity. Um, you know, there, there are, um, you know, opportunities for us, you know, Science Foundation Ireland, um, we're working with them right now to try and establish, 
you know, cybersecurity as, as, as a dedicated research center. Um, this is a conversation that's been evolving for maybe the last two years. Um, and it's only in the last maybe six months or so we're seeing real appetite um, to, 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 to focus on cybersecurity as a specialist research center. Um, we'll hear more about that over the next couple of months, but it, it's an exciting development. And then, you know, the final area we have in terms of pillars is, is, is growing and growth and export, um, which really is about establishing Ireland as a presence internationally. Um, there aren't that many dedicated security clusters um, that are recognized internationally. You know, Israel will probably be one that stands out today. Um, and I think there's a great opportunity for us, you know, in Ireland, you know, with all of the talent we have, um, you know, all of the activities that are, you know, you know, spread right across the country to establish us, us ourselves as international presence. Um, so, you know, I, I really, I'm really excited about, about, you know, this, this chapter establishing itself. And uh, I look very much forward to working with, with the team here uh, and all of you in the next while. And, and I hope that, you know, we are able to shape our direction. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly looking for feedback. We're constantly looking for help. Um, and, you know, as you establish your cluster um, and, you know, come together frequently, um, you know, we'd be very, very interested in, 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 in working more closely with you to learn about, you know, the areas that interest you and, and see how we in Sour Ireland can, can help you guys be successful. So. Great. Thanks very much, Paul. Um, so I think Paul's given a, an excellent overview of Cyber Ireland and our cluster activities, but maybe for, for people who aren't as familiar with who we are and what we do, um, Cyber Ireland was launched in May of last year, so it's, it's a relatively short time ago. We're still in the initiation process of, of setting up and, and running and managing the cluster. Um, but why it was set up was to address specific challenges for the cybersecurity industry in Ireland and that were found during a number of workshops ran in 2017 and 2018 with the cybersecurity sector. Uh, and the kind of key remit is to represent the cybersecurity sector and the cluster across Ireland. Um, although I'm based in Cork, um, you know, the, the scope of the cluster is national because our goal is about supporting Ireland to become a leading location internationally for cybersecurity talent. Uh, for cybersecurity solutions and innovation. And we can't do that uh, on a regional approach. We can't do it by calling it the Cork Cyber Cluster or the Dublin Cyber Cluster or the, the Galway Cyber Cluster. It has to be at a, a national level as well. And that's why we're developing these regional chapters as well to still have that community driven approach across Ireland. One of our key successes to date has been that we have 180 member organizations that have signed up to become part of Cyber Ireland to date. Uh, 160 of those are from industry and that's the key thing that this has to be driven by industry um, it's solving industry challenges uh, and it's about supporting industry as well uh, and without industry driving this it, it won't work and my role here really is to facilitate the the needs uh, of industry uh, through this cluster organization and what we're looking to do is we don't want to be just a another networking group or an industry association or a lobbying group it's, it's about becoming an innovation cluster, uh, an organization that's able to enhance the innovation, the growth and competitiveness of all the companies that are, are part of the cybersecurity cluster in our, Ireland. So just kind of a quick overview of, of why do we actually need a, a cluster organization and where did it come out of? So we're, we're all aware of the uh, increasing amount of cyber attacks and cyber crime globally. Um, and this is obviously a, a growing cybersecurity market opportunity as well. If we look at the Irish market, it's actually quite small. It's, uh, we estimate it's around under 500 million uh, per annum. So we're really looking at the global cybersecurity market opportunity and for Ireland to be a base for uh, multinational companies, security operations as well. But security is important for all sectors of the economy that we're, we're very aware of. Um, it's important for our digitally intensive sectors, which there's uh, over 200,000 people employed in Ireland. It's critical for areas like data centers. Uh, and Ireland is known to be a, a digital front runner in Europe, but it, it's as important that we're also a cybersecurity front runner in Europe as well, so that we can protect our critical national infrastructure, but also the intangible assets that, that are based here in Ireland, such as the IP from multinational companies and that Ireland is seen to be a safe and secure place to do business. 
that's the that's the need. But there's also the ingredients of the cluster that are here before we started Cyber Ireland. So we have a very strong multinational sector in Ireland. Uh, we've mapped out over 50 multinational companies with security operations from pure play companies um, in, with five of the top 10 software security companies based in Ireland. Uh, but we also have a range of companies across different diverse sectors who have security operations centers and their security teams based in Ireland, such as Optum or Primerica or HPE who have a SOC in Galway. So it's about supporting this multinational sector, but also leveraging the experience and the expertise that's built up um, across Ireland. What we're also seeing as well is a growing indigenous cybersecurity sector in Ireland. We've mapped over 60 companies that have cybersecurity products, services and solutions that are already exporting or have the ambition to grow global already. So it's really important that we support this uh, SME and startup ecosystem as well. And the final piece to the puzzle is around talent. Um, why do companies come to Ireland to, to set up here? Uh, and the reason is, is talent. We've uh, 7,000 people employed in the cybersecurity sector in Ireland. Uh, we've estimated about 30,000 people with security skills and certifications. Uh, we've mapped out over 120 courses in Ireland that can get you into a career in cybersecurity. And there's a range of uh, courses and initiatives um, a cybersecurity apprenticeship program that's been launched by government um, that are ongoing around the country to ensure that we have a sustainable pipeline of cybersecurity talent for the future. So our objectives around Cyber Ireland uh, are around addressing that talent and skills need, enhancing collaborative research and development, supporting networking and collaboration, actually promoting the cybersecurity sector both in Ireland and international and internationally, and then liaising with government and advocating on behalf of the, the companies in the sector, as well as looking at that international dimension, supporting startups, SMEs and attracting FDI. So Paul has gone through a couple of our key work areas already, so I'll just go over these quite quickly. Um, around talent and skills, we're looking at understanding what are the current and future skills needs uh, through our annual cybersecurity skills survey. We're using that data then to work with the education and training providers to align with industry needs then for new course development. Uh, and even this year, there's 14 new cybersecurity courses that have been developed um, by higher education institutes. Uh, so that's a really uh, great progress in, in the space of a year. And then thirdly, it's around promoting cybersecurity careers and pathways to both adults and children. So we have a, a Cyber Women Ireland group, which is about supporting women in cybersecurity careers and attracting them to cybersecurity careers as well. Uh, and as Paul was saying around our Cyber Ireland Schools Academy, uh, which is teaching transition year kids about cybersecurity skills also. Uh, research and development is a really important one. It's what's going to put Ireland on the map internationally. Um, so our key goal here is around development of a national cybersecurity research centre. But we also have done a cybersecurity R&D mapping of industry and academia, and we regularly have updates around funding from uh, national sources and European sources as well. We have the building the community piece, which is about these regional chapters, national promotion, and we'll be running a, a national cybersecurity conference, which was planned for October this year, but we had to postpone it due to COVID-19. And then the final one is um, about growing and exporting. So supporting SMEs, startups, and FDI as well. So why are we developing these regional chapters? And the reason is when we started off Cyber Ireland, we ran these three cluster initiation workshops in Cork, Galway and Dublin to go out to industry, ask them what their challenges were uh, and understand what should be the focus areas for the cluster and its strategy. And what we found was across the country, there was different strengths, different challenges and different interest areas in each of the regions. And so we kind of understood that there's different communities and different needs across Ireland uh, and hence why we've decided to start regional chapters uh, and the aim of these regional chapters is that they're driven by industry, they're facilitated by us in Cyber Ireland, uh, they'll put on a regular meetup for the cybersecurity community in the region which will include information sharing between organisations in the region uh, but also bringing in taught leadership for, so people from outside of the region and internationally like we have Alison here today it's also looking at identifying particular strengths and addressing specific challenges for the region and then linking into the Cyber Ireland national activities and feeding into national advocacy as well. 
So that's the purpose behind these regional chapters here today. And it's also going to be what we'll be doing through the Northwest uh, chapter as well. So Paul, I'm gonna hand it back over to you now. Thanks, Owen. I suppose, so just a quick quick intro to Alison then. So Alison is the, um, as Owen said, the Chief Information Security Officer uh, for Optum here. Uh, Optum is a division of uh, United Health Group. So Alison and I have probably worked together, I suppose, for almost eight years at this point. And Alison has been heavily involved in kind of helping to, to kind of build and, and develop the cybersecurity team here in Op Optum and Kenny. So as, as Owen mentioned, Alison is based in Minneapolis. So I'd like to thank her for joining us at this uh, early hour. So Alison, I hand it over to you there. Great. Thanks so much, Paul. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me here. I'm excited to be part of this event and part of this launch with the Cyber Island Initiative in the Northwest chapter. Um, on October 28th, the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Homeland Security, issued a joint cyber warning that the criminals behind the Ryuk and TrickBot ransomware were operating more aggressively targeting hospitals and healthcare systems across the United States. However, these attacks started long before October 28th with the Ryuk and Conti strains of ransomware attacking organizations globally. In the middle of October, um, we saw Microsoft take down the TrickBot network, which was comprised of thousands of infected devices that were being used to deliver this malware that was crippling hospitals and the ability to provide vital care to individuals in not only my country, but also many countries around the globe. But what was really interesting was how fast the attackers pivoted to a different method of delivering that ransomware and that malware. They moved over to Google Drive. Um, and what that served as for me was a devastating reminder of not only how vulnerable our host hospital computer networks were during COVID-19, but also how resilient these cyber attackers are and how they are able to thwart really the most carefully planned and executed countermeasures. And these challenges that we're seeing today and the challenges that we're talking about with ransomware are only going to increase in the coming years. The evolution of the cybercrime landscape cannot be ignored, especially with the rapid proliferation of both new technology and the advancement of remote business models, remote services, and remote care only accelerated through the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you had any question about the criticality and the important role that cybersecurity plays in the welfare of today's society, these attacks spell it out in stark terms. In fact, the World Economic Forum in their global risk report listed data fraud and cyber attacks as one of the top five global threats. The other five elements on that list, extreme weather events, the failure of our society to mitigate climate change, and major national natural events such as an earthquake or a tsunami. Think, think about that for a second. Protecting data and thwarting cyber attacks have taken its place alongside dealing with natural catastrophes as the most pressing and demanding threat requiring the world's full attention. But unlike natural disasters, humans are capable of preventing much of the suffering that we're seeing from attacks on our digital economy. And that's a challenge that we, the security community must commit to addressing on a global scale. The world really depends on a digital infrastructure and people depend on our digital devices. And we know that these systems are under attack every single day. And cybersecurity is all about keeping the world safe. That's why Optum supports the efforts of the Cyber Ireland community team and the efforts that you're having today with the launch. Ireland is a leader in innovative technology. That's why we're there. And many of the companies that Owen and Paul mentioned just a few minutes ago also have the privilege of operating with the talent base in Ireland. And we need cybersecurity purpose built into that ecosystem. We need you to bring that into the technology ecosystem. Cybersecurity is really a fundamental business enabler, and it enables our global digital economy. It helps us protect our digital assets, helps us contribute to business continuity, resilience, services around the globe, defending that technology, and managing risk as a whole. And cybersecurity requires a holistic approach. It's not just about technology. It's about taking into account people. It's about taking into account process, business strategy, and interconnected systems. And those interconnected systems now have created a global platform for us to have this dialogue together. And the dialogue has to occur 
not just in a technology spectrum, but across all public and private sectors. And it needs to include both the professional and the academic environment so that we have a collaboration and a collective thought and we can bring the best talent forward to defend our to defend our globe together. Um, bringing together the technology community with a solid talent pipeline and promoting that industry collaboration across the technology spectrum ensures the focus of cybersecurity remains key as we build new technology in Ireland and around the globe. And that's really the mission of Cyber Ireland. And I'm here to say that Optum is proud to be a supporter of that and grateful for the opportunity to partner with all of you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Owen. That's fantastic. Thanks very much, Alison. So Paul, I think what we'll do next is we're going to move on to the survey uh, to give everybody a chance to, to input um, into the development of the Northwest chapter. So if you bear with me for one minute now, I am going to send on the link for the survey. There you go. So. Everyone should have the link to the uh, to the survey there in the chat function. If you can click on that, it'll bring you to a Survey Monkey link, and on that we have there you go. So we have the Northwest Chapter Launch Survey, and uh, the idea behind this is to give you an opportunity to input into the development of the Northwest chapter, um, because this is an initiation event, we're just starting things off here today. So we have questions around what should be the initial focus area of the Northwest chapter? What topics are of most interest to you for the Northwest chapter meetings? What time is best suited? Is it early morning? Uh, this time, maybe later in the evening? Uh, what do you hope to gain from the chapter meetings? Could your organization provide a speaker? Uh, is your organization interested in participating in the Capture the Flag event? Uh, and would you like to contribute to the running of the Northwest chapter as a chapter lead? And if you have any other comments or feedback, please do fill them out here as well. Thanks, Owen. Yeah, and obviously, as I said, kind of important that we do get that, get that feedback. So, um, okay, so I suppose we'll, we'll move on to our uh, panel discussion here. So, um, Maybe just a quick intro to our, our panelists and ask them maybe to, to join us here. So we have Mike McGrath, who's the um, Strategic Business Development Director for Viavi Solutions, uh, based here in Sligo. Uh, Veronica Rogers, who's a lecturer in Sligo IT, and John McGarvey, who's a le lecturer in Letterkenny IT. Um, so Mike, I might just, just maybe start with you uh, with the questions. So um, can you maybe just tell us a little bit about kind of your business here and uh, Kind of, you know, why you, why you looked at the Northwest to, to establish the business, and what what have been some of the kind of the pros and cons of that? Sure, <clears throat> sure Paul. Yeah, I'm here about uh, twenty years now, um, so I'm nearly a Sligo man at this stage. I paid the ultimate price to get here. I, I had to marry to get here, and be accepted in some form or other. But um, I've been traveling. My previous companies would be Dublin, London, and and in America when I sold before. So I was really keen to try and do something from home here. And um, I saw, <clears throat> saw an opportunity to build a services company where we could um, build a security posture based on using the network as a data source. I felt that there was an opportunity there. Um, and I've been able to develop that on to the point now I'm part of Viavi Solutions in America. Actually, my divisional headquarters is beside Allison there in Minneapolis and headquarters of California. So. Why start White Peak Sligo again? Uh, that's where my heart is. That's where my home is. That's where my kids are. Uh, I can look out the window here and I can see that the tide has gone out. So there's a value. Would you ask then about the pros and cons of, of setting up here? Um, I mean, the real pro to me is the people. Um, I think we completely underestimate the, the power of cop on in this, this area um, of technology, the breadth of knowledge. Uh, obviously, it's cheaper. Um, people are, uh, are the cost of employing people is much less here. A big thing for me as well was the added emphasis on the fact that I could retain them um, and that they had the location and lifestyle. So that's that's the pros. 
the con is simple. People think about it as travel um, and that we're not in a, an area recognized. I mean, a, a number of my services companies did come up to make sure that we had a building, we had offices, we had human beings, that I wasn't hiding something. But I think the biggest con here historically would have been confidence. Uh, that people didn't believe that you could do it from here with no track record from here and that type of thing. So I think we've broken down some of those uh, and have the proof points now to go forward. So that's that's my background. Thanks, Mike. Um, uh, Veronica, maybe I might, might go to you next. Um, so obviously, Veronica, I, I know you're from your days in, in Primerica, um, but you're, you're working uh, in, in IT Sligo for the last, last while. So... Um, can you maybe tell us a little bit about kind of what you see then as the, the kind of challenges in the region, given you've got kind of maybe two different perspectives from the industry side and, and the kind of academic side? Yeah, thanks. So, yeah, you're right. I've kind of seen this industry from a few different angles now at this point. So I worked in Primerica for just over the eight years um, in the cybersecurity team. And as you said, I'm now um, a lecturer in IT Sligo. So some of the challenges I see now are challenges that I have seen eight and nine years ago when I first joined the industry and it's all about I suppose attracting and keeping the talent in our region and you know when I joined Primerica in 2011 it was a very small team there was two or three of us at most and within a very short space of time the team grew at an exponential rate because you know, there was so much more demand on security services. We started off doing web application security and it was quickly um, seen that we needed to get into network security, into threat analysis, into mobile security. So with this huge demand of talented security engineers, um, you know, sometimes the supply doesn't quite match up. And in particular, I'm very um, passionate about attracting females into this industry. Um, as we know, in the computing sector overall, um, there's a lack of females and in particular in the cybersecurity world. So I feel very privileged now to be working in IT Sligo. Um, it gives me a platform to talk to the students that I teach and also the students in secondary schools. Um, IT Sligo, I suppose before COVID, we would have open days that the students will come onto campus. We would go into the secondary schools and talk to the students and you know, really explain to them what a career in cybersecurity is like, what a, day, what a day in the life is for a security engineer. And that's why I feel this Cyber Island initiative is a great platform to get that message out there for, you know, people to join the industry and in particular females, because not a week goes by in IT Sligo that a student doesn't stop me and ask me, you know, what's a career like in security? What industry accreditations would you suggest that I need to do to get into cybersecurity? What was it like working in Primerica? Um, you know, so I think it's about getting that platform. It's about joining up with Cyber Ireland in the initiative that Owen mentioned about cyber women in Ireland and about, I suppose, you know, promoting ourselves and, and, and getting the industry um, out there for our younger generation, maybe, and, and, and people that want to upskill in this field too. Yeah, great. Thanks, Veronica. Um... Yeah, and, and as you say, I think I think we have a maybe the industry in general has a bit of an image problem at times when when people look at cybersecurity, you know. So so and there is a huge kind of diversity when when you look at the different roles available. So yeah, that's no, a great great call out. Um, so John, over to yourself then, maybe. Um, so obviously, you know, Letterkenny IT has a kind of long established kind of track record, you know, long established programs in cybersecurity. So. You know, kind of just based on what you've seen, kind of what sort of opportunities do you think that the Northwest chapter can create, maybe for graduates and, and alumni? Thank you, Paul. Um, well, what I see uh, the role of the chapter for uh, undergraduates and postgraduates is starting off, first of all, would be to build a closer relationship between the, the undergraduates uh, and the various different uh, companies within the cybersecurity industry here in the Northwest. Um, and that could be through meetups, um, through talks like what we've had today, and through maybe CTFs, Capture the Flag competitions as well. And th all those would be an opportunity for uh, sh you know, students and undergraduates to talk to uh, industry, and it might be an opportunity for them to actually see and talk to people and find out what it's really like to work in, in, these, in this field. It also is an opportunity to find out about what particular job or opportunities and how things are changing 
you know, this this industry does change fairly quickly, um, such as mobile and web and so on. Um, it also may be an opportunity for graduates to use the chapter to meet with just employees and to talk to them. Um, uh, and not just in the Northwest, but through uh, Cyber Ireland as a whole. Um, also, we could look at um, perhaps it, from an undergraduate perspective, um, look at how uh, maybe third year students uh, before they, you know, go into fourth year could spend that summer maybe working in industry, you know, and that could be very useful for them to see what it's really like. Um, and also uh, another benefit of the chapter would be that undergraduates in selecting their final year projects could maybe work with industry a little bit closer to solve real life problems. You know, so those are the kind of benefits that I see the uh, chapter having for um, undergraduates and postgraduates as well. Okay. Great. Thanks, John. Um, Thank you. So I suppose just a reminder, if anybody has any questions for the panel or, or for Alison, um, you can drop them into the, the Q&A function there on, on, on the webinar. Um, Mike, I might just go back to you um, just with, with a quick question. So, so you, mentioned, you mentioned there um, that that obviously you're now uh, involved with with Viavi, so can you tell us a bit about kind of you know you know kind of how that came about in terms of I know you had the uh, initial startup here in Sligo and then and then you've recently uh, gotten involved with that global company. Yeah, it's fast. It's in, it's been a very interesting journey. So essentially, I, I don't take the standard path. Obviously, picking Sligo isn't the standard path, but uh, it meandered from there. So. Um, what I did was I built a services company first called, uh, it's now called Enterprise Defence. And uh, we picked up a number of key corporate clients here in Ireland that allowed us to develop intellectual property that we had and held within a company called The New View. So that's why you see I'm a bit schizophrenic on, on LinkedIn. Um, so the services business then honed, honed the software, tuned it, worked with key, key people in the industry. Um, where we became in and brought in uh, input from the network infrastructures, areas that the security people and application delivery people hadn't been using before. What we then did then was I took the software company, uh, Anuvu, and uh, I looked up a Gartner Magic Quadrant and I saw some of my old friends had moved all into from Flute to Visual, uh, from Flute to Viabi Solutions. And at the time, like most people, didn't know who Viabi were. Um, they were a $1.2 billion company, four and a half thousand people, but mainly selling into carriers, but did have a business unit that they bought a company called Network Instruments out of uh, Minneapolis. And some of my old friends from Fluke had moved across, started the conversation. And we ended up in, it's not a direct acquisition, it's um, an OEM that leads to an acquisition, it's called the call option. And that's been very successful for both parties because we can build, integrate, and I present myself as a strategic business development director then. So I've got myself involved in the business um, and some exciting opportunities for me to get back uh, to sure. a point where I'm engaging with some of the key vendors and key yeah. customers. So there is a different path. It's not, you know, you go get your VC and, you know, you, you build it up and you sell it that way. So I've sold it. Yeah. So that's yeah. So um, thanks, Mike. So, so Alison, this, this one is for Alison Veronica here. Um, so we have a question. What needs to be done to support women in cyber and why is it important? And maybe I might, uh, Alison, if you're there, maybe we go to you first. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> first of all, it's important to bring the diverse perspectives of, of women and all people forward um, as we think about problem solving in cybersecurity. But it's particularly important for women in our community to be enabled um, and with an appropriate network and with the opportunity to participate in cybersecurity. A lot of times there's been a lot of scientific research and what we see is that around the age of 12, 13, young girls really start to move away from science, technology, engineering, manufacturing, and move towards other types of types of industries. And there's a whole host of, of research on why that happens um, that you know is that has different schools of thought. But really what it what it says to me is that we need to make sure that we promote women and we promote girls in this field and we give them the opportunities not just to go and get the training, but the opportunities to join those networks to be supported and to have a place to really evolve. 
And then practically the cybersecurity shortage globally um, is right now three and a half million and that is only going to increase. So we need to enable everybody to participate in the global mission to secure our digital infrastructure and our, our solutions and our technologies. Thanks, Alison. Yeah, if I could just add to that, yeah. Paul, um, I think what Owen has mentioned about the mentorship is going to really, um, in my opinion, I think it's going to really help get, attracting females into this industry. Just from my own personal experience, I've been working in the computing uh, sector for over 15 years now, um, eight of them being in the cybersecurity, eight or nine. And, you know, when I first started out, many moons ago, and I applied for a degree in IT Sligo, believe it or not, um, you know, there was never that kind of support or encouragement. And I didn't know any females in this industry. And, you know, I used to go to these career guidance um, uh, events, and I was always told that my uh, ideal career is a career in nursing. Now, if anyone knows me, would know that if there's a medical emergency, I'm possibly the last person you would <laughs> want around. Um, so I think it's just about in, you know, getting the word out there, because if I had a mentor, if I knew another female in the industry, and if I knew what a career in security was about at the very early stages, you know, I, I, it would have been a no brainer because in the career I've had, and in particular in cybersecurity, there's nothing else I would rather do. Like it's a very fulfilling career. And that's why I think it's definitely about getting the message, message, message out there, having a mentorship program, you know, talking to these students at an early stage, like what Alison says, back in the um, secondary school level, even, you know, the early secondary school years to, to just really promote, you know, the benefits and the, um, the enjoyment of working in this industry. Yeah, thanks, Veronica. Um, just going to go to another question here. Um, interesting question, actually. So, um, so it'd be great to see a greater cybersecurity knowledge and support for people working in other industries, so like utilities, manufacturing, web development, banking. So kind of what is our current thinking on how the, the chapter can develop in this area? I might go to you on that, John. Well, so the question is, uh, how can we support uh, other industries such as utilities and so on um, and banking? Um, I think that's probably a challenge in that it's, one thing for, for me anyway, that academia doesn't move that quickly. It's normally four to five years before we change our courses and so on. But even that, uh, I do a number of, you know, lectures on utility security. And it is a very big challenge in that it's completely different from traditional security, cybersecurity, where um, the CIA confidentiality, integrity and availability are your major thoughts there with uh, utilities it's completely different it's all down to downtime um, availability and it's a very very different set of uh, just thinking and skill sets are needed to deal with uh, utility security and it's something that we're lacking uh, a lot in um, I've only done managed to create a number of lectures in the last year or two on this and it's an area that requires uh, further research there are vulnerabilities out there for the last well over 10 years um, the Aurora vulnerability, particularly. Um, unfortunately, um, the DHS, Department of Homeland Security in the US, made a bit of a mistake with that one, but uh, by publishing 800 pages of it. So <laughs> unfortunately, these things happen. Um, but still, I think we're well behind on uh, utility security. Um, and it is an area that's going to require further research. And and uh, I think it's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah, and I think just from... From, from my own perspective on that. Um, I know that in some of the other chapters, I know, for example, in the South chapter, um, so, so again, based on some feedback they, they got in the area, uh, they're running a series of workshops specifically around uh, threat intel um, over the next over the next few few months. So so again, I suppose if there's a specific area maybe within that, that that's of interest, um, obviously be interested in hearing kind of what sort of feedback is out there and, and maybe how the chapter could could look at maybe running some information sessions or some um, some some general workshops around a specific topic. Um, so uh, a couple of other questions here. Um, so another one here from Enda uh, with working from home now due to COVID-19, do you see uh, that trend continuing and see that as an advantage or a disadvantage in sourcing or attaining cybersecurity tal talent into Ireland and uh, the Northwest region? Who wants to come in on that one? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to check it. I'm, I, I would have spent a lot of time in planes. And one of the reasons I set up the services business to cut down my, my traveling and then I went global again by going back into Viavi. Um, I think uh, a few weeks ago I did 13 meetings in one day. It would be impossible in any other form except the online form. So you get the coverage. What you do miss is you miss the people side of it. You miss the sidebars or conferences and things like that where you bump into and the, well, I miss the bar. Okay, I'm being honest. But um, no, I, I think there's a huge advantage. Um, the fact that we can build new communities. I mean, the fact that we could only set a company up and had to ask an employee to have to move uh, up family and up sticks to get them. I think that's a big disadvantage. I see COVID as a big eye opener to the value of living somewhere where we happen to live, which is in the Northwest, um, to get the benefit of, of that. Um, but I don't, I, I, yeah, it, COVID is going to make a difference. And I think it's realized how easy it is to actually do business online. Yeah. But it's, it's a bit of everything. You know, we're going to, the pendulum is going to swing back, but not the whole way. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, that Mike. Yeah. Um, question here, actually, Alison, for, for you. I might ask you to pick this one up. Uh, so you made a point that cybersecurity is not just a technical problem. Uh, obviously, brings together kind of the human aspect of it. So, um, so how do you think we can bring together people from IT, business, maybe psychology, criminology, etc., to discuss these kind of softer issues and, and tackle the, the kind of weakest link problem? That's a really, um, that's a really, really good question. And, and it's important, I think, first of all, and these, these types of efforts that we're here today to, to launch are, are really the, the catalyst or the, the sticky connective fabric that helps us bring those different groups together and helps everybody understand that it's not just the job of a cybersecurity professional to defend an organization, that it really relies on all of us. Um, and we need to think about things from a a personal perspective. At Optum, we do a lot of business strategy work and our security teams and our security officers like Paul sit at the table while we're developing our, our, our business strategies because from a cybersecurity perspective, if those systems aren't available, if we can't count on those resources and the business can't count on the resources to deliver the services, well, there's no faster way to, to end the business strategy. And so we've looked at how do we not only bring that dialogue forward from a business perspective, but how do we look at it from a human perspective? And we put a lot of time and energy not only into collaborations in the community, but also training um, across our communities and moving away from this is what I need you to do at work to maintain things as, as securely as possible, which a lot of people are like, oh, OK, you know, I won't click on that link. Right now with all of us home at COVID, and I don't know about all of you, but I seem to have developed like an Amazon shopping condition. Um, we're constantly being hammered with different emails that are coming in. Got your order, processing your order, here it comes. And you know, it's, it's everything I can do not to click. Uh, what we wanna do with those trainings is help people understand that the things that we're communicating that help us keep our business safe and keep our technology safe are also behaviors and practices that you can bring home to keep yourself safe and to keep your keep your family safe. So I think it's you know just a bottom line it uh, for us, Paul. I think it's really making sure that we think about our own behaviors and and the things that we do and how that transcends the cybersecurity ecosystem. And we participate in a meaningful way um, in these types of community events. And you don't have to be a cybersecurity person to get involved. Um, it really, what we ask is that everybody gets involved that just has an interest. I think a lot of times people think, well, I, you know, when I do interviews or I bring, you know, or I, I speak at different panels, and this is not just for women, but I think for everybody, well, I didn't go to school for cybersecurity. Neither did I. I'm actually the accidental security professional. It's what I, I remind my team of all the time. Um, and with technology being as perennial as the grass, you need to have a natural interest and a natural curiosity to want to continue to evolve. So if you go back to the basic premise, if man can make it, man can break it, all of us have an opportunity to participate in the cybersecurity dialogue in a meaningful way. Great, thanks, Alison. Could I just come in just for one second, Paul, just to echo that, if yeah. you don't mind? Sure, um, yeah. I think, uh, you know, completely agree with Alison. And I've just seen from my personal experience of working in industry and academia, sometimes it's the point of awareness and showing them 
the effects of attack. So if you physically sit in a classroom or in Primerica, we used to do awareness sessions and you're showing them, look, if you click on the, this link or if you do X, Y, and Z, this is the consequences and actually showing them. Um, I think that's, that kind of nearly brings it home, you know, what the effects are if, um, of a cyber attack and to be more aware and bring that home to your home environment. And, you know, I suppose teach your kids as well, if you have kids about what they should and shouldn't be doing. Um, you know, on the internet and in social media. Yeah, thanks, Veronica. Yeah, that's it. I think is it's important that yeah you're given pro providing tools that they're kind of uh, I suppose they're uh, you know they're tools that can be used at home as well as as well as at work. Um, so I know we're we're kind of getting getting tight on time here. So what I might do is just take take one more question here, um, and then we'll I'll hand it back to Owen just for a quick kind of wrap up. Um, so let me just see here. Um, so, so I just had a question here from Regina. So what level are the challenges in attracting and retaining cyber talent in the regions? You know, is it entry level, first tier, uh, tenured? Uh, not sure, maybe, uh, I don't know, Veronica, you mentioned that at the start. Maybe you have for John, maybe, come in there. Yeah. Um, so the question is, just to repeat it there, sorry. Yeah, so what level are the challenges in attracting and retaining cyber talent in the regions? So is it entry level, first year, you know? Yeah. Well, being in like on this at this end of the um of the fence, uh we're we're just providing them, but uh there's certainly it was there's no shortage of, of students entering uh the C, the computer security courses that we offer. Um but trying to get them employed doesn't seem to be a major issue there as well. Um I suppose they may start off as pen testers and as, you know, uh, junior um, cybersecurity staff. But uh, yeah, uh, it doesn't seem to be any. We have quite a few doing the um, masters in cybersecurity as well over the past eight years. So again, there is there was a question there as well about uh, training and so on. Um, how um, about how to be? Uh, you know, what was the question? It was about. Uh, um, how does a little company with highly qualified professionals but no um, background in security or cybersecurity diversify into this field in order to generate a potential suitable revenue stream? So again, uh, the, what the answer that I would have with that is to do a, a master's in cybersecurity, either part time, and that that might start your um, your expertise and your uh, your knowledge base, you know, for that, and from that may, may come a potential revenue stream, you know. Just a quick answer. Well, John, uh, John, as well. We from from my side of it is that it's a, it's easy to retain when people are interested in learning, right? So the people I've taken on over the years, engineers, many different types of engineers over the years. What I'd suggest to them is that I would never give them a job for life. I'd be giving them a job opportunity, and it's down to them to make the most out of it. Um, I expose them to customers, I expose them to opportunities, I expose them to problems. And it's what they make of that after that, right? Um, I go back to my e talent we have here in Ireland, which cop on. Fly your cop on. Common sense. Uh, right? And, and the same for that company that's looking to pivot. It's not an easy pivot. You can't half know security, right? So, you know, you, you want to go and embrace some aspect of the market and become quite proficient at that rather than dabbling because... The last thing, one of the big things with cybersecurity, it's, a, it's, it's you know, the responsibility and any, any of the guys that I use that, that have worked with me on the, on the service desk with customers, I'd never get the customer, ring the customer and scare the hell out of them. I'd ask, always get the, my guys to ask the question, is this normal, right? Rather than saying, we think you're in big bother here. So there's some aspect of that maybe might be of use. One thing I'll, I'll say as well is that of the 12 years that we've been producing um, cybersecurity uh, graduates, um, most of the ones that I'm still in contact with still work in cybersecurity. So yeah. I suppose I, people, when they get into the field, love it. Yeah, I, I looked in it for many, many years, and it was about 10, 12 years ago that I pivoted into it. And maybe I might have not, because it's a, it's a difficult environment. It's hard to be taken seriously sometimes. You're crying, you're crying in the wilderness at times. Um, but it is fascinating. <laughs> it is, you know, from, from simple networking, you know, just passing packets to go on. I wonder where they came from. 
I wonder where they're going to. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. I think as, as it, it comes back to, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of different directions you can go once you come in, you know, I've seen marketing students come in and work on awareness campaigns. And then you have the really highly technical roles where, as Mike says, you're looking at packets crossing the network. So, okay. So folks, I think that's it um, for today. I know we have some other questions there. So what we might do is, um, is, is capture those uh, and maybe do yes. some follow-up uh, in, a, in a future session um, and maybe take them as part of the feedback. So, look, again, just from, from me, I'd just like to thank everyone for, for attending today, uh, attending our launch event, and delighted to see the, the, the number of people we had uh, on board here. I'd like to thank uh, our, our panellists and our, our speakers, especially Alison, for, for rising early to join us here this morning. And um, Owen, I'll, uh, I'll hand it back to you. That's great. Thanks very much, Paul. Um, really interesting panel discussion. Uh, I think kind of highlighted where some of the interest areas uh, for the Northwest. There's a couple of interesting comments as well in the chat function that I was just going through there. Uh, there was one from Kevin McShane about building links with NI Cyber and Queens. So I'm happy to say that both NI Cyber and Queens are attending the, the event today. And I think that's important as well that this is going to be an open and inclusive group. Um, so to have people from both the Northwest of Ireland and Northern Ireland involved in it as well. Uh, and Kevin, you were saying there about uh, the Grow Remote, Remote initiative uh, for Donegal as well, that, that might be worth linking into. Uh, Thomas Dowling from LYIT was saying the importance of the higher education institutes that they play in attracting new FDI and ensuring that talent pipeline and that the chapter can work with the likes of the IDA and also Enterprise Ireland in supporting this as well. Um, Justin Keller was talking, obviously, um, John got to the point around maybe one of the areas look at, we should look at is how can we support small companies that don't have that background in cybersecurity to be able to diversify into the field. And if that helps them to develop their products and their services to be more secure and open up a potential uh, revenue stream, then that's a value add for, for companies uh, as well. So... I think that that's pretty much it. Oh, the other one was, sorry, um, Alison was talking about cybersecurity is not just a technical issue. And I think that's one of the core focus areas of Cyber Ireland as well. And what we're trying to do in raising awareness of cybersecurity for, for everyone. Uh, and we have a Cyber Ireland careers dashboard on our website, which maps over 50 different cybersecurity roles that actually came out of NIST in the U.S., um, so it's the, the technical, but also the non-technical roles in project management, education and awareness, legal, uh, GDPR, all these different areas. So to raise awareness of these different types of roles to people that are interested in a cybersecurity career or interested in upskilling. And then the next part of that is people can actually look at our course mapper, which gives an overview of the 120 different courses that can get you into a career in cybersecurity. And you can search them from all the higher education institutes um, and different course providers around the country, which include both technical and non-technical courses as well. So I suppose we want to look at the next steps now, where are we going to move on from here? Um, we've added everyone that signed up to our mailing list, and we're going to have a specific mailing list for the Northwest chapter as well to keep you up to date on our activities. Uh, anyone who is interested in participating in the cluster and the Northwest chapter, um, you'll need to sign up for a Cyber Ireland membership so you can do that on our website. Uh, and we're also going to send out uh, an update on the results of that survey uh, next month. So we'll have an idea of what's the best time for the chapter meetups, what are some, what are the topics for the next meetups as well, focus areas, whether we should run a capture the flag event. Uh, and we'll also be looking through anyone who's nominated themselves to come on board and contribute to the running of the chapter as a chapter lead, and as well that call for speakers as well. So if anyone would like to put themselves forward uh, to speak at any of the events as well. So to wrap up, um, I just want to thank our speakers again to follow up what Paul was saying, in particular, Alison, for joining us from the US this morning. Uh, I want to really thank the chapter leads who have put in a huge amount of work over the last couple of months in kind of getting this together, kicking things off, um, so thanks to Paul, Veronica, John and Kean uh, for all their work on putting this together. Uh, and this is only the start of things, you know, uh, and it's really up to all of you who are on the, the webinar this morning. And there's actually over 80 people who have attended this. So it shows that there's, there's real buy-in from um, people in the Northwest for this group. 
Uh, and I think the success of the chapter is going to depend on the interest and the buy-in from everybody in the Northwest and to uh, develop the, the, the focus areas of, of where we want to go with this as well. Um, as I said, it's only the initiation. There are plenty of opportunities to get involved and contribute to the events, to run initiatives uh, and to get involved as well. So we want to hear your thoughts. Um, and I think what we're doing here really is going to ultimately build a, a stronger cybersecurity community uh, and sector in the Northwest. And this all feeds into Cyber Ireland's overall activities then at the national level to, to make Ireland a leading location for cybersecurity. So thanks very much for your time today uh, and we'll be in touch over the, the coming weeks.